The Vulture Droid is one of the most recognizable starfighters in Star Wars, as iconic in the prequels as the TIE Fighter is in the original trilogy. These small but deadly droid craft were used extensively by the Trade Federation and later the Confederacy of Independent Systems, always deployed in vast swarms against Republic pilots. Based on their depiction in the films and especially in Star Wars The Clone Wars, you might think Vulture Droids were mere cannon fodder, the TIE Fighters of their day. If so, you're selling these fighters short. The Vulture Droid was actually one of the most brilliant starfighter designs in the Star Wars universe, and in this video, we'll tell you why. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Officially, the variable geometry self propelled Battle Droid Mark I, the Vulture Droid, was the product of Haor Chal Engineering, a Shi Char company based on Charos IV. The Shi Cha were a bit of an eccentric species. They were intensely religious, and at the core of their religion was the pursuit of perfection. The Shi Cha sought perfection by making or improving things, with the most common form of religious practice on Charos IV being precision manufacturing. These zealots made a lot of stuff, but their speciality was starfighters, which they designed and built in vast cathedral factories. Their products typically put those of their competitors to shame. Howard Charles engineers considered the Vulture Droid to be their magnum opus. One of the most highly valued traits of Shicha products was their ability to transform, a rare feature that held great religious significance for the species. The Vulture Droid was one of the most successful examples of the Shicha's so called variable geometry craft. In other words, its wings could reorient to serve as legs, allowing these droid starfighters to walk when they weren't in flight. The Vulture Droid was originally designed for the Trade Federation and service in the Trade Federation Defense Force's new droid army. Prior to the Vulture Droid's introduction, the Trade Federation relied on more generic starfighters piloted by battle droids which were notoriously ineffective. Their new droid starfighters could cut out the middlemen and ended up proving to be far more effective than any fighter craft the Trade Federation had ever used before. The Vulture Droid remained a key component of the Trade Federation's arsenal for as long as the company existed, participating in the Battle of Naboo and many lesser engagements. During the Clone Wars, the Vulture Droid was adopted as the primary interceptor of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, largely replacing the Starfighters used by other Separatist Council factions. The CIS Navy deployed them in vast swarms, which numbered in the tens of thousands in larger battles. These adaptable craft served the Confederacy's interceptors, air support, and even anti-personnel platforms, fighting from the first Battle of Geonosis to the Battle of Coruscant. The Vulture Droid was extraordinarily compact. In fighter mode, it was roughly 3.5 meters in both width and length, with the empty space between their wingtips making up much of that length. The main body of the Vulture Droid was only lightly armoured, sheathed in a non-magnetic Alclad alloy, and was mostly dedicated to the craft's two ion engines. The craft's droid brain, transmitter arrays, and most of its sensors were located in a bullet-shaped head which could extend out from the main body along a thin, stalk-like neck. Most of the Vulture Droid's target profile was formed by its four blade-like wings, the most well-armoured part of the craft, which contained the droid's repulsor lifts and primary weapons array. Due to its small size, the Vulture Droid was rather fragile, especially when compared with starfighters used by the Republic. It had no shields and only light armor. However, the Vulture Droid made up for this with sheer speed. These bad boys were unimaginably fast, capable of flying at over a thousand kilometers per hour in atmosphere and at speeds of several thousand Gs in outer space. In the real world, human pilots can only survive nine Gs. In the Star Wars universe, Tensor fields allowed them to survive much more, but Vulture Droids moved so fast and could change direction so rapidly that not even the best tensor fields could keep a human from splattering all over their seat. Vulture Droids didn't need shields or armor, they were designed to be too fast to hit. Speed wasn't the Vulture Droids only asset though, it was also heavily armed for such a small fighter. Each Vulture Droid had a light laser cannon per wing, totaling 4 cannons per craft. These weren't the most powerful guns in the market, but they could fire at high speeds and could quickly wear down starfighter shields. The main body of the Vulture Droid also featured a pair of energy torpedo launchers which could be swapped out for more laser cannons. In either configuration, these could also do serious damage to a target. 
As if all that array of weapons wasn't formidable enough, Vulture Droids could also carry missiles, with one mounted on each wingtip. Usually, they carried concussion missiles, but they were also known to use their missile launchers to deploy buzz droids. As a starfighter, the Vulture Droid wasn't without its weaknesses. It wasn't the smartest droid in the Confederacy, and enemy pilots who survived first contact with these nimble menaces quickly discovered that their combat maneuvers were basic and repetitive. A much less well-known weakness was the unusual fuel system on which the Vulture Droids relied. These droids were powered by weird solid fuel slugs which could only power the craft in combat mode for a little over half an hour. Once that time was up, Vulture Droids had to return to their carriers to refuel. The Trade Federation made up for this weakness by sending the droids out in staggered swarms, ensuring there were always hundreds in action at any given time. But this weakness could nonetheless be exploited by cunning tacticians. Of course, with all that said, the Vulture Droid was an amazing starfighter. On its own, it was remarkably hard to pin down and quite good at outmaneuvering and shredding enemy pilots. But one of the Vulture's greatest assets was that it was never on its own. These bad boys came not in squadrons, but in swarms, with each Lucra Hulk class battleship carrying 1500. It doesn't matter how good a pilot or their fighter was, nobody short of Anakin Skywalker could last as long against that many Vultures. To make matters worse, Vulture droids were usually coordinated from droid control ships, which gave these massive swarms incredible coordination. A properly coordinated swarm of these bloodthirsty droid fighters could shred a squadron of clone pilots in seconds. But the Vulture droid wasn't just a kick-ass starfighter. Its wings could change configuration, transforming it from a starfighter into a light walker. Since this conserved fuel, and since it was faster to launch from walker mode than from a maintenance rack, Vultures often did this while awaiting combat, allowing them to deploy extremely quickly. Vulture droids in walker mode were often used to patrol hangars or spaceports. During the Clone Wars, the Separatists often had vultures crawl around on the surface of their warships, which gave the warships extra protection. General Grievous often had the Invisible Hand's vulture droid complement patrol the hull in this manner, allowing the fighters to respond to surprise attacks while tri fighters were scrambled in the main hangar. The Separatists also took advantage of the Vulture Droid's walking abilities to assign squadrons to warships that usually didn't have hangars, such as the Munificent Class Star Frigate and Recusant Class Light Destroyer. Like bats in the rafters of a great hall, these Vulture Droids would gather along the support beams that held up the distinctive carapace-like armor sheaths of the warships, magnetically attaching themselves to the interior for travel through hyperspace. In walker configuration, the Vulture Droid was a force to be reckoned with. All of its wingtip mounted weapons were unusable in this configuration, but its energy torpedo launchers were not, and the droids could use them as devastating anti-personnel weapons. In its walker form, the Vulture droid went from being a fragile, barebone starfighter to the equivalent of a beefed up ATRT, able to wipe out entire squads of hostile infantry. Encounters with grounded Vulture droids weren't too common for your average clone, since most commanders preferred to keep their vultures in the air or patrolling hangars and spaceports. But when they did come into contact, it usually didn't end well. Only one starfighter, in our opinion, could give the vulture droid a run for its money, the droid Tri-Fighter, the most feared separatist fighter of all. But it's a close contest. The Tri-Fighter was definitely a better starfighter, but it wasn't nearly as versatile as the vulture droid, and it was a good deal more expensive as well. It's a tie as far as we're concerned. But what do you think? Do you prefer the Vulture Droid or the Tri-Fighter? And would you also like us to do a similar video on the Tri-Fighter? Let us know all that and more in the comments section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.